Today I'll tell you the story of the three musketeers in the Chinese Communist Party. Welcome to State of Politics, I'm David Zhang. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoy the content, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below what you would like to see covered next. The Three Musketeers is a French novel depicting three swordsmen who fight for justice, and they're described as heroic and chivalrous. In the Chinese Communist Party, there's also the Three Musketeers, except they don't really fight for justice. In fact, each musketeer has a story associated with how they have screwed over an income class in China. Now, introducing the Three Musketeers, Chinese leader Xi Jinping, former Beijing party boss Tsai Chi, and former Shanghai party boss Li Chang, the Three Men of Doom. They now sit in the highest ruling body of the party, called the Politburo Standing Committee. To ascend to such a rank, each of them had to have done something extremely terrible in, in our perspective, but in the eyes of the CCP, that brutality and merciless execution will earn them the top spot. Now, what makes them the Three Musketeers? Well, there's a meme spreading online. It says, here, Xi, Xi Jinping is good at cleaning up the high-end population, Li Chang is good at cleaning up the mid-range population, and Tsai Chi is good at cleaning up the low-end population, the dream combination. Now, what does that even mean? So let's start with Tsai Chi, the guy who is supposed to clean, clean up the low-end population. In 2017, just 11 days after President Trump visited China, a housing fire killed 19 people in a district in Beijing. Back then, Tsai Chi was the newly appointed Communist Party Secretary of Beijing, and he spared no mercy for the victims. Instead, he took the opportunity to accelerate the city's demolition campaign, forcefully evicting hundreds of thousands of migrant workers in the area. And in 2016, People's Daily, which is a state media, had published a so-called opinion piece, which is called Experts on the Slowdown in the Growth Rate of Permanent Residents in Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou. And then here it says, relying on policies to clean up the low-end population. The term low-end population first surfaced in China's state media around 2010. While there's no clear definition, People's Daily referred to the low-end population as those who are, quote, hardworking and independent with dreams of climbing the ladder. But the reality is, the situation around major Chinese cities like Beijing and Shanghai was that there are millions of people working so-called bottom-level jobs. And here we call them minimum wage or in, in China they're branded as bottom feeders. These are often migrant workers from the countryside and they come to the city looking for opportunities for employment, but they fail to get a decent job. So many of them have to work low-income jobs like construction or food delivery and such. And they happen to live in the outskirt districts of these major cities and in these so-called slums as referred to by the government. Now, thus the official state media referred to them as the low-end population. It's a derogatory term, as it's not referring to somebody with just low income, but rather the fact that they're actually at the bottom end of society. But like we just talked about, the plan to get rid of millions of so-called low-end population began as early as 2016 in Beijing alone. So the housing fire became the trigger for Tsai Chi to crack down on the Chinese people. To please Xi Jinping, who was already the Chinese paramount leader then, Beijing party boss Tsai Chi tasked the police in Beijing to evict millions of people in the middle of winter in Beijing. Within three days, these so-called slums were cleared out. Hundreds of thousands of people who were working in low-income jobs to just barely get by suddenly lost their opportunity to stay near Beijing. The area where the fire was quickly got demolished, and uh, millions are left to fend for their survival. Some of them left to go back home, others went to different cities. For that brutality, Tsai Chi quickly became a symbol associated with carrying out orders with no remorse. In fact, a video had leaked prior to him uh, uh, doing the eviction where he spoke about taking action. Here is what he said. When it comes to the grassroots, we have to use real bloody measures and tough confrontation. We have to solve this problem. Of course, Tsai was referring to the upcoming evictions. And if we take what he said into the literal translation, then he literally means the use of real swords and real spears to carry out the action. And apparently evicting millions of people was the act of war he spoke of. 
Despite what the CCP tells us about lifting poverty, social class is a distinct feature between rural and urban areas in China. China's rich poor distribution is actually significant, with 600 million people still making just $140 a month. Those that seek opportunities in urban areas are restricted by two factors, connection and what's called hukou. Connection is in China very extremely important. Uh, you know the right people you get far in life. And to build connections in China, it's very normal to bribe officials in the government, police, teachers, professors, and even hospitals. But the other hard part is hukou, which is like a municipal registration system. In China, however, the hukou system is used to actively limit where a person is allowed to live, especially if one is born into a rural hukou. In China, the hukou system literally restricts you from attending certain schools, getting certain jobs, or even getting an apartment. Tsai Chi thus becomes the CCP official known as the one who deals with the low-end population in China, earning him the title of one of the three musketeers. Okay, so the CCP waged a war on its modern-day peasant class. What's next? Well, how about a good spanking for the urbanites in Beijing and Shanghai? Those that do have a good residential certificate, a good job, and live in a decent city life. This is where Li Chang comes in. This guy was actually, until recently, the Shanghai party boss. And he is literally the judge, jury, and executioner of the regime. And as the new premier of China next year, he gained the trust of Xi Jinping when COVID hit Shanghai in March this year. Li Chang initially assessed that uh, the city needed precision COVID control, meaning that they just needed to target exposure and isolate those that actually got infected. Sounds pretty rational, right? Well, then suddenly he decided that that wasn't going to be the policy anymore. He then locked down the entire city of Shanghai, 25 to 26 million people, for two months, all because Xi Jinping instructed him to do so. We saw officials in white overalls called Big Whites guarded every street. Uh, the doors were welded shut in some apartment buildings, and they used large fences to keep people from leaving. And they ordered communities to shut down. Many times, they went without food. And they went even into homes in these apartments and, and in different communities to perform sterilization. Of course, home sterilizations have drawn comparisons with the practice of ransacking private property during the Cultural Revolution in the 60s, which is a decade of political and social chaos driven by Mao Zedong's policy and his desire for complete control. And that was a period that Chinese internet users euphemistically referred to as, quote, those 10 years. And they were seeing that in 2022. Of course, I mentioned the food crisis. Food was just the biggest issue. Overnight, markets were emptied. And for two months straight, inadequate food supply was really the reality. The human toll, beyond what a modern city like Shanghai can imagine, leading to many recalling the Great Famine, starving to death 45 million people in China. In some cases, food was just kept hidden from people. They were instead stored, for God knows whatever reason, instead of feeding it to the people. And we also had vendors jacking up the price of food by something like 10 times, profiting off of suffering. For two months, Shanghai went through some of the worst humanitarian disasters in recent history, with people starving, jumping off buildings, fighting on apps for food delivery, babies were separated from their parents in quarantine, senior home deaths, etc. And watch this. Now, cops were also attacking people for protesting the quarantine in Shanghai, and many people had no food at all for weeks on end. And some apartment buildings had to resort to exchanging items with neighbors like a bottle of soy sauce for pieces of pork, or two potatoes for a coffee. With people like Li Chang in power, no matter how prosperous a city may be, once that COVID hits, well, it's over for the city dwellers. And after the Shanghai lockdown, people began calling Li Chang a brutal executioner of Xi Jinping's policies, and thus earning him the title of one of the three musketeers. Now, both Li Chang and Tsai Chi listens to Xi Jinping, because Xi Jinping is the paramount leader in, in the Communist Party, and Xi's wish is their command. Of course, Xi Jinping is last but not least, the most powerful musketeer. He's great at dealing with the high-end population, the so-called upper class. From removing former leader Hu Jintao, to reining in Chinese billionaires to cracking down on large tech companies, anything that has influence and power in China must succumb to Xi's control. 
And since last year, she has been targeting high-tech industry giants like Alibaba, like Tencent, and JD. In fact, recently, these three companies have been told to merge with three Chinese telecom companies for a so-called strategic partnership. China has also banned all celebrities recently from endorsing a range of products and banned those with, quote, lapsed morals from endorsing anything. Under Xi's call to align society with core socialist values, celebrities are restricted from a huge portion of their earnings. Soon, we could see celebrities in China reduced to nothing but state propaganda performers. Specifically, Chinese celebrities cannot publicly endorse or advertise health, education, and financial commodities, including e-cigarettes and baby formula. Regulators said that the push was to ensure China's society was, quote, guided by Xi Jinping's thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. Referring, of course, to the sweeping ideology that's underpinning the rule of the Xi-led Communist Party. The regulators also said, quote, celebrities should consciously practice socialist core values in their advertising endorsement activities, and endorsement activities should conform to social morals and traditional virtues. That basically just means if you ever make trouble for us, we have various ways to keep you in line. Now, celebrities have been caught up in scandals in recent years, and uh, often the joke here online is that male celebrities are used as a distraction for state scandals. Say if something bad happened to the Communist Party, they will find a male celebrity with scandals too. And they often are accused of prostitution or drug charges or sometimes fraud, whereas female celebrities are often dinged on tax evasion. And simply with one statement from the police bureau and an attempt to ruin the images of the Communist Party leader's label, that celebrity is going to be disappearing from the public eye for a very long time. And when they do come back, well, they just look like they're tame to the max. And let's not forget, China's cyber regulators have been attacking tech giants since last year in what Xi Jinping calls, quote, the disorderly expansion of capital. And these tech companies have great influence in China. So if they stray from the Communist Party, then that becomes an uncontrolled aspect of Chinese society, meaning any company too big to rival the CCP must be crushed and controlled. And let's just also remember that every Chinese company has to have a Communist Party cell in it so that Xi can control directly everything that happens in the business world in China. And being a CEO or a billionaire in China is no longer the same as our understanding of what the CEO and a billionaire would do. Under Xi's targeting of the upper echelon of the Chinese society, CEOs have been rendered to nothing more than just a basic manager. And the real party boss is basically the company's real leader. There are a million ways for the party to keep you in line. And so that's why we refer to Xi Jinping as the guy who targets the upper part of society. There, I've told you the story or the backstory of the three musketeers. Xi Jinping goes for the big guys. Li Chen is responsible for cracking down basically on the regular folks in the city. And uh, Tsai Chi is here to clean up and destroy any low-income people in China. Thanks so much for watching today's episode. This is State of Politics. I'm David Zhang. If you enjoyed our content today, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below what you think and what you would like to see covered next. Thank you so much for watching today, and take care. Bye-bye.